For this video, I'm going to go through the process of how to draw an eye from a reference photo. Before I start uh, doing any drawing, I want to take a moment to try to understand the forms and the structure of the forms that I'm working with, get an idea of the perspective that I'm looking at, and maybe the most basic thing that when I'm working with an eyeball is, is that sphere that everything is kind of revolving around. So I see that and I can start to get an understanding of some of the perspective here. And notice how the eyelid really, really follows like this cross contour line. I have this forward facing plane of the face here and then a couple corners where I see a change of directions. Uh, notice the tear duct right here when it comes off of the eyeball and then it starts coming towards the, the nose, it starts going forward. Now I'm gonna start my first step of working with lines and matching proportions. I'm going to draw this on a one-to-one -one scale, so my drawing is going to be the same size as the reference photo. I'm started by just getting some measurements, some basic measurements of how wide it is by how tall it is, and make sure that those proportions are correct. I'm making my marks a little bit darker so that you can see it on, on a screen. Um, I, ideally, you'd want to keep those pretty light so that they could be raised and they wouldn't show up, but... Uh, I make some of those marks to give myself a couple checkpoints, a couple guidelines, and then within those I can start matching the lines. When I'm at this, this linear stage, this very beginning stage, I'm looking for my longest lines, the most general lines. I don't want to start with real detailed lines, I want to start with the most general lines. So in this case, the, the eyelids provide me with some of the longest lines, and I've already kind of talked about those when we were looking at that photo. Remember the eyelids are on top of a sphere, so you really want those lines to wrap around the surface and that will help communicate a form. Now I'm onto the iris. I did a quick measurement to try to make sure that I'm keeping it as wide as it is on the reference. I have a, a center line that I'm building on top of uh, to keep it symmetrical. You wanna try to make sure that this is a, a nice solid circle sort of shape. Uh, don't turn it into a football eye. If you kind of squish it and turn it into like an egg shape or a, or a football eye. It's a common mistake here. So I'm taking my time doing multiple passes to try to get it to be a, a symmetrical circle. And I can keep doing these measurements. I can do these measurements all over the reference photo as much as I want or as little as I want. If I want a lot of guidance, I can, I can do a lot of measurements. If I'm feeling pretty comfortable, then I can just go for it. Right now, I'm, I'm starting to, to work on the eyelids here. So I want to take a second to break down what's going on with an eyelid. So I'll draw this from the side view so you can kind of get an idea of what I'm talking about here. I have a circle for the, for the eyeball. And then the eyelids are going to sit on top of the sphere. And they extend beyond it too in this little space. And then if my light source is coming from the top left, I, it gives me some clues about where to put value. So this is going to be in shadow because it's uh, facing away from the light source. And then this bottom part is facing up towards the light. And so that'll be lighter. And then if I look at my reference, that's exactly what I see, right? I see this bottom part of the eyelid all in shadow. And then I see this part right here. It's a lot lighter because it's facing up towards the light. Hopefully knowing that can help me make sense of some of the shadows that I'm looking at. Understanding it will help me digest it and, and know what to expect and what to look for. I'm still uh, at this linear stage where I'm not adding a bunch of dark marks. I'm using an HB pencil. I'm keeping it really light, drawing with the side there, not using the point and, and making big indents in the paper. And I'm just starting to outline these shadows now. I'm still looking for long general lines and some of these shadows are kind of long and general. But I am starting to get a little bit more specific. You see I'm starting to work on the pupil. I found that highlight area and I outlined that because I want to make sure that that stays really white. And so I'm going to outline it to protect it and make sure I don't bring any value into that. And the white of the paper is able to continue to show through. Eventually, I'm going to get to a point where I've drawn pretty much every line that I can find. I'm getting to that point now. Pretty much everything else that I see is 
uh, going to be done with value. It's going to be done with transitions of values. Uh, I don't see many lines left. So uh, once you get to this point, you're kind of at the end of that first step. And now you're moving into the second step. I'm going to start blocking stuff in now. This is a quick step. It's my favorite step. I take, I'm still using my HP pencil and I'm still keeping my value light, but now I'm starting to add some shadows. So I'm laying my pencil down on its side. Again, I'm not using the point. I'm using the side of the pencil and I'm just dragging value into all of the dark areas. I'm separating my lights from my darks and I'm not thinking a ton about matching values. I'm mostly thinking about uh, just placing value in the shadow areas. And, uh, and it's really that simple and I'll just go through and do that all at once. I'll go back in with a stump and blend some of those marks together. And that concludes the second step. It's a pretty quick one. Now I'm onto the third step of adding a full range of values. And I'm focusing on just the shadow areas right now. So I'm looking for those darkest areas and I'm gonna start matching those. So now I'm grabbing some different pencils, maybe a 2B, maybe a 4B, and I'm looking at the darkest areas, and you can see I'm starting to go a lot darker now. At this stage, uh, it's gonna be much harder to erase now, and that's why it's so important to start off slow, to hold off on, on value until you know that all of your proportions are correct. And so that's why I take so much time in the beginning when I'm working with those light lines, I'm doing all those measurements to make sure that everything's exactly where it needs to be. And when it comes time for me to start going all the way dark and, and getting these you know, black marks in there that I'm not gonna have to erase those. Those are gonna be precise. Now I'm on the iris and starting to shade that. And this is another really good place to take a second and try to understand the anatomy that we're working with. All right, let's look at a couple things about the iris and the pupil. So the iris is the colored part, and there's some shifts in value from light to dark, and those are in a radial pattern. They go outward from the pupil towards the edge. It's a, generally a little bit darker on the edge of the iris. But there's some other stuff going on here. So here's the eyeball, and I'll set it in an eye socket real quick to give you an idea of the perspective that we're looking at again. Here's the eyelid, it cuts off the top of it, and here's the bottom eyelid, and then the bottom plane starts going this way. And then if I'm thinking about my light source, light's coming from this way, that helps me make sense of all the shadows I'm seeing, right? It's why uh, this side of the eyeball is darker than this side of the eyeball. And if you look here, one thing that doesn't add up is that little highlight in the bottom of the iris. Now that is, you would think that that's on the opposite side of the light source, so it should be darker there, but it's actually reversed because of the shape of the iris and how it angles slightly in. So I'll draw that to give you a little bit of an idea of what I'm talking about. Here's a cone, and let's imagine that the light source is, is uh, hitting this cone the same way that it's hitting our uh, eyeball over here. If we're talking specifically about the outside of the cone, the light side is over here, and the dark side is over here, furthest away from the light source, right? But then if you look inside of the cone, it's reversed. On the inside of the cone, the left side is the one that's in shadow. It's not getting any light, and so it'll be very dark. It'll go through its transition, and then on the far right side is where you will see the plane getting hit by the light. We can take that information about a cone and apply it here. Now, the top left of the eyeball is going to be facing the light source. The white of the eye is going to be a little bit lighter on the left. And then the glare is on the top left. But then remember, the cone is reverse. So the top left of the iris is going to be dark. And then the bottom right of the iris is the part that's facing the light source. And so that's going to remain lighter. You can see that as I'm adding value, I'm, I'm kind of adding value in a radial formation. Uh, and those marks will kind of serve as, as that pattern in the iris. Uh, but, it, but I'm not 
focusing a ton on it there. Uh, go back with a blender and start to even it out and really fill in all of those little white spaces and get it to be nice solid patches of value and uh, use the blender to, to get some of those little remaining details of the iris. I'm working my way out of the shadows and into the lighter areas, the mid-tones and the lighter areas, and that's the second part of this third step. I'm continuing to match values, but now I'm focusing on the light areas. I have to be a little bit more careful now. I have to be a little bit more subtle. So I'm going back to an HB pencil, maybe even potentially an H pencil, and I'm gonna use the blending stump a little bit more, and I'm gonna start using a brush too. I wanna be uh, careful because the my light areas, they're really subtle transitions of value. And if you make too harsh of a mark, you're not gonna be able to erase it or it will show through too much. So that's why a brush can be really good because I can just move and push around some of this value that I lay down and get it to be really soft. And my final step is the surface details. Textures, little wrinkles, little pores, things that I've held off for in a long time. My surface details are on top of the more general sort of form, so I wanna make sure to save those for last. One of the first things that I'm doing here is I'm getting some of that skin texture, some of the uh, little pores and bumps in the corner of the eye there. I'm using the stump quite a bit, uh, because I don't want those to stand out too much. Those are just real subtle, and I'm going like in little circular sort of motions to suggest uh, a bump. And I'll do that around the whole thing. Uh, I'm doing it on the eyelid right now and making sure that I leave that little glare on the top left. And then another detail to think about are the eyelashes. I want to try to keep these organic. Uh, you see I have them swooping to the corner there. It's a, it's a mixture between thinking about them as lines and thinking about them as forms because most of the time they're kind of clumped up. You don't see very many individual little eyelashes, and if you do, they're, they're really light. So most of my eyelashes are drawn as these clumps, and then when they are drawn as sort of individual lashes, they're really light, and I'll use the blender to soften the edges a little bit I want to keep them subtle. I want to keep them kind of discreet. I don't want to put a whole bunch of emphasis on them. And I want to keep them uh, real organic and irregular. You know, they, it shouldn't be a whole bunch of symmetrical eyelashes. And notice how they change directions, how they're going to the left on the left side, and then they kind of come straight and then start going to the right a little bit more. I'm looking at a couple finishing details here, some wrinkles and some pores. The final thing I'm thinking about is going back and making sure I have some real nice clean highlights. And so I might go back in with an eraser. Sometimes you can use a different material, like here I got this white gel pen and so I, where I want there to be really white glares, I'll use just a couple dots of white from this pen. So I did tear duct in the corner, a couple dots along the bottom eyelashes here a couple dots for the glares on the on the uh, skin texture in the corner of the eye there and uh, I'll call that good so there you go there's your tutorial I'm looking forward to see what you guys can do